What's up folks? In this video, I wanna build the same app with two different AI tools. I wanna to build the same app using Claude and its artifacts feature and with GPT engineer, and then just, you know, have a reflection about different approaches to AI based code generation and getting to the actual full stack version where you have a repo with code that you can actually use and do stuff with. Let's start with something relatively simple. I want a quiz app based on about some topic. Okay. Let's say build me a quiz app about artificial intelligence topics, artificial, uh, let's say with artificial intelligence questions, uh, make it interactive aesthetically pleasing and i should always get a score at the end of a quiz session so let's see what happens all right we're getting somewhere all right cool so we get a quiz app. What is machine learning? Let's see. It's a branch of AI focus on creating systems learned from data. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Which of these is not a type of machine learning? Uh, cognitive learning. Uh, what is deep learning? Learning that occurs during deep sleep. <laughs> a subset of ML using neural nets with multiple layers. There you go. Uh, what is the Turing test used for? Uh, evaluating machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior. There you go. And then which company developed the system to feed the world champion goats? Deep mind, Google Deep Mind. Yeah. Beautiful. The score is correct. I got it all correct and I can restart. Yeah, but it's always the same question. So it'd be nice if we could somehow integrate more questions into the app, etc. But that's fine. Let's see now how the same prompt would do in GPT Engineer. So I'm going to take the same prompt. I'm going to go over to gptengineer.app. And I'm right here and uh, oh, wait, got to go back. There you go. So I'm going to put the same thing here. I'm going to send that out and let's see what happens. All right. So it's explaining what's going to do. So create a quiz page component, quiz question, results page, update the navigation routing, add AI related questions. So it's interesting that now that we're interacting with something that's actually more like a, a tool for you getting to the final output with all the code and stuff you see that they have some prompting strategies uh, that break down your request into things that are translated into actual code. So that's pretty neat. Uh, okay, so we get a pretty, pretty cool intro window. Welcome to AI, test your knowledge of AI, start the quiz. Okay, that's pretty interesting. The questions are similar to the ones that I got with Claude. I'm assuming that's because they probably use the Claude API Anthropics API in the back end, maybe. So this, which is not machine learning. Okay, so this time it wasn't cognitive learning, it was quantum learning. That's kind of interesting. What is deep learning? Uh, does NLP stand for? Uh, what does NLP stand for in AI? Natural language processing. Which company developed the chatbot ChatGPT? It was OpenAI. Uh, star quiz. See results. That's interesting. Take another quiz. So let's see. Uh, but then it's the same questions, same issue as before. Now, that's pretty cool. Both got a relatively similar uh, answer. Both returns a relatively similar answer. The reason why I got relatively interested in Jupyter Engineer is because when I come over here, uh, let's see, quiz page. Yeah, so you get the code like you would. You get it, you see, you get it already kind of organized as a source code. This is the first thing that I kind of found interesting about Jupyter Engineer. The second thing that I found interesting is that if I go over here in GitHub and I say create repo, uh, I can click on my, my account that I already have set up here. And beautiful. And now I get this very wonderful link that I can click. And there you go. Now, you what, what I get here is essentially a repo for the app that we've just built. So add quiz app feature, etc. list components, all the code organized in the repo. So you can clone this and start developing it with your AI code editor of choice, like VS Code or Cursor, which is something I want to try out as well. And obviously you can get similar generations like these, like using things like Ader and things like that, which are interesting. 
I just found that it was like really simple to get actual working code with everything already organized as well as, you know, how to run it, you know, here, follow these steps. So I can, I know I have to just clone it, go into the folder, install what I need and then run it. Right. So actually let's see if I do these steps, if I actually get this app running on my machine, I'm going to copy these. And now let's see, deep engineer, da -da 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 -da. let's see if that works. So I'm going to run this. So repository not found. So I didn't find the repo. So let's actually copy the correct, the correct path. So I'm going to say get clone. So let's clone it. And then let's go in it. Let's go inside CD quiz arena IO. So I'm going to say this. Okay. So we're inside. Everything is working so far. NPMI. So NPMI and then NPM run dev. And I have NPM installed. So it should work. Although we see some deprecation warnings here, which I guess it's a problem that with all AI code generation, if they were fine tuned in some specific stack of code, they're going to, you know, give some answers that are a bit like, Let's see if we go npm run dev, if this works, it's pretty cool, right? Because now I have this actual app that I built working locally on my machine. So I'm going to go to the local host. Ah, there you go. That's pretty cool. So start the quiz, learn from data, quantum learning, subset of ML, natural language processing, open AI, see the results. So the app is running locally on my machine. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's not to say that, you know, any of these tools uh, are like perfect or you know they have everything you need for any kind of app this is a pretty simple request and uh, the questions generated were of like ish quality but overall it's what i like about thinking about these two approaches if we go between claude and gpt engineer is that when you go to the code in gpt engineer you get this one version app where everything is in this file right Obviously, there are many different approaches that today they exist, either with GitHub, GitHub Copilot, Cursor, Ader. There's so many different code generation tools you can use today. But the one like really feature that sells it for me for something like GPT Engineer is just the fact that it's so easy to get organized code, like in already like some sort of infrastructure, obviously kind of opinionated infrastructure, but it uh, doesn't matter because now you get the repo, you clone it, you have that first working prototype, and then you can build from there. I think that it's interesting to think about ways where you can first essentially start prototyping with Claude and then get to like a prompt that builds the thing that you need and then use a tool like GPT engineer to like instead of you having to go and organize the structure of your code, you just put it here, make sure you generate something that's along the lines of what you're going for, create a repo, clone that repo for you. And then from there, you can have an editor with some AI features that allow you to do that editing, creating tests and iterating. Obviously you can do that uh, in GPT engineer, probably somewhere here. What I like about this is thinking about what each tool is providing as a original authentic point of view or perspective like this tool has clearly some interesting way of breaking down your request to make code infrastructure and then create a repo that actually just you know it worked first first run first time that i did this i did it's actually literally the first time that i did this so i think it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool that you can get to the repo so quickly because once you have the first version of your prototype you can build from there then you can use cursor vs code etc and there are many other tools that do similar things i think i haven't explored them as much things like ader and stuff like that but whichever one you choose i like thinking about how each of these tools is providing some sort of authentic perspective on the process of building the ideas that you're interested in. That's what I would say about that. Hope you guys liked the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheers.